He is the creator and sustainer of all the worlds, whether those worlds are known or unknown to mankind. eyes unclouded by hate does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice hello everyone my name's charlie you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer c.e dorset and today i'm here to continue our discussion of the prophet by khalil gibran i love this book and i hope you're enjoying our time with it as much as i am today we will be picking up with the chapter on beauty If you would like to read along with me, all you have to do is do a quick search online. The book is now in the public domain, and you should be able to find it relatively easily. Let's go to the text, shall we? And a poet said, Speak to us of beauty. And he answered, Where shall you seek beauty, and how shall you find her, unless she herself be your way and your guide? And how shall you speak of her, except she be the weaver of your speech? (laughs) I love the way this... Okay, so we're beginning with a poet. And if anybody should know beauty, it should be a poet. The entire purpose of poetry is to bring a sublime nature to words so that they can touch us even in our deepest recesses and bring us new life new insight and new meaning and the poet asks two very interesting questions how can we seek beauty and find her if she is not our guide and how can we speak of her unless she weaves our speech beauty as we've discussed numerous times on the show is one of the energies of god with which we participate as we learn to live more fully in the kingdom and in the spirit. Beauty is one of the great powers in this world that gives us life and purpose and meaning and strength. And I tell you, surely there is no way to encounter beauty unless beauty guide you. There is no way to speak of beauty unless beauty gives you words. Let's go back to the text. The aggrieved and the injured say, Beauty is kind and gentle. Like a young mother, half shy of her own glory, she walks among us. The passionate say, Nay, beauty is a thing of might and dread. Like a tempest, She shakes the earth beneath us and the sky above us. Hmm. I'm actually going to go on and read the next stanza as well, because it continues this dialogue. The tired and the weary say, Beauty is of soft whisperings. She speaks in our spirit. Her voice yields to our silences, like a faint light that quivers in fear of the shadow. But the restless say, We have heard her shouting amongst the mountains, and with her cries came the sound of hooves, and the beating of wings, and the roaring of lions. And at night the watchmen of the city say, Beauty shall rise with the dawn from the east. And at the noontime, the toilers and the wayfarers say, We have seen her leaning over the earth from the windows of the sunset. In the winter, say the snowbound, She shall come with the spring leaping upon the hills. And in the summer heat, the reapers say, We have seen her dancing in the autumn leaves, And we shall drift and we saw a drift of snow in her hair. All these things have you said of beauty, 
Yet in truth you spoke not of her, but of needs unsatisfied. And beauty is not a need, but an ecstasy. It is not a mouth thirsting or an empty hand stretched forth, but rather a heart inflamed and a soul enchanted. It is not the image you would see, nor the song you would hear, but rather an image you see through your Clo though you close your eyes, and a song you hear, though you shut your ears. It is not the sap within the furrow bark, furrowed bark, nor the wing attached to a claw, but rather a garden forever in bloom, and a flock of angels forever in flight. And I think this is such a wonderful way to talk about beauty because it is so easy for us to contemplate beauty from the standpoint of those things that we desire, those things that we want, those things that we need, those things that we hope for. But beauty is none of those things. It is not that which we desire. This puts beauty far off. This puts beauty at a distance from us and from our everyday lives. And it makes beauty less than what she truly is. You see, when the prophet says that beauty is ecstasy, this is what we are seeking. Beauty is is that moment of arrest when it holds you and you can't look away. I remember one time I was out with some friends and we were sitting on the hilltop under a single tree and we were out all night and we were singing and we were dancing and we were talking all night. And then on the horizon, that red light, then the golden light in the sky just burned like it was on fire. And we all stopped in unison. We couldn't talk. We couldn't do anything. There was just that moment. The sky was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. It wasn't the first sunrise I'd ever seen. In fact, we were there for sunset the night before, but we were busy and we were distracted and we didn't pay attention to it. But there we were up on this hill surrounded by plains. And all around us, we could see the rim of the sky as the dome burned as morning scorched away the night. And it was such an arresting moment. It held us. We couldn't let go. Or maybe it couldn't let go of us. Either way, we just sat and we stared and we smiled. And eventually one of the girls that was with us began to laugh. And we all laughed. Why? I don't know. I don't know what was funny. And I, when I think back on it, I don't think anything was funny about the moment. It was that exuberance, that ecstasy of life, that here we were in this state, in this place, in this time, as the fire of the sky stretched out around us, and we were beholding its glory, frozen, just held by the experience of it. And all night we had been debating poetry and music and talking about beauty. And there it was. It was almost as if she heard us talking and decided to say, all your words are nothing. Here I am. Behold me. Look at me. Hold fast to the vision I shall set before you. 
And it was such a wonderful cap to the evening. And without another word, we stood up and we packed up our blankets and we packed up our picnic and we picked up our trash and we loaded them in the car. And one by one, we dropped each other off just sitting in the glow of that moment, wanting it to last forever. And I remember getting home and going up to my room, laying down. And just thinking about everything. What a wonderful time it was. And how glorious it was that I shared that experience with my closest friends. It wasn't special. The sun rises every day. It wasn't unique. We spent many a night up on that same hill. From dusk till dawn. But something in that moment, the sky was just right. We were just right. And that glory was received by us. And for weeks and months afterwards, we would bring it up. Remember that sunrise? Just the glory of it, the beauty of it, the perfection of it. In that moment and in that time, as we just were. That ecstasy is beauty. It is not in the aesthetic that can be described. I can tell you some things that I find beautiful in art, in music, in poetry, in fiction, in movies, in animation. But none of that is true beauty. There are moments, rare moments, when you're watching something and it just takes your breath away. You just stand there in awe and the experience of it. And in that moment, you know, beyond all words, that you are now beholding beauty in all perfection, unfolding before you like a living poem, like a wordless sermon explaining to you the nature of life, explaining to you the nature of the world and everything that you've missed in it. There it is. You can't look away. You can't let go. And it stays with you and it lingers. I've had that experience with poems. I've had that experience with paintings. I've had that experience with music. And I invite you to think about the times that you've had that experience. Because it's easy for us to distract ourselves. In fact, all of the prophet's words up to this point are about those distractions. You see, everyone mired in what they are doing describes beauty as that thing that they don't have. The night watchman talks about the rising sun because it's the end of their labor and it's what they lacked all night. There was no sun. There was only stars and moon. And they don't talk about the beauty of the stars and the moon. They don't talk about the beauty of the summer. They talk about the beauty of fall. And the wonderful play of the snow in the air. It's so easy for us to become distracted by our lives. This is why we practice mindfulness. This is why we strive daily to open ourselves to the moment and to stay as present as we can in the moment. Because that's the only place that we will encounter beauty. That's the only place we will encounter life. It's not in the past. It's definitely not in the glorious past that we tell stories about. It is here, it is now, it is stretching out before us in its sheer perfection, waiting for us to see her, waiting for us to acknowledge her and to know that she is there. And until we take that time and enter that state where we can be arrested by the ecstasy that she brings, we find ourselves lost. We'll continue this 
after the break. And we're back. So I hope that that has helped you understand what we're talking about when we talk about beauty. Just to end this beautiful stanza, this beautiful poem, the prophet says, People of Orphalese, beauty is life when life unveils her holy face. But you are life, and you are the veil. Beauty is eternity gazing at itself in a mirror. And you are eternity, and you are the mirror. That can be so hard for us to remember sometimes. But once we do, then it will bring us glory. Continuing on to the next chapter. And an old priest said, Speak to us of religion. And he said, Have I spoken this day of aught else? Is not religion all deeds and all reflection? And that which is neither deed nor reflection, but a wonder and a surprise ever springing in the soul, even while the hand hands hew the stone or tend the loom. Who can separate his faith from his actions, or his belief from his occupations? Who can spread his hours before him, saying, This for God, and this for myself? This for my soul, and this for other, and this other for my body. All your hours are wings that beat through space for itself, from self to self. Let me say that again. All your hours are wings that beat through space from self to self. He who wears his morality, but as his best raiment, were better naked. The wind and the sun will tear no holes in your skin. And he who defines his conduct by ethics imprisons his songbird in a cage. The freest song comes not through bars and wires. And he to whom worshipping is a window to open, but also to shut, has not yet visited the house of his soul, whose windows are from dawn to dawn. Mm. Mm. We talk about this a lot. Every moment is prayer. We in our bodies are a living temple, and our spirit, our soul, a living sacrifice. We pray constantly. Every action is prayer. And I'm not going to belabor that too much since I recently did a full episode on that. See, the prophet on prayer. We <laughs> talked about that to a great extent. But this is religion. This is what it is all about. That our entire lives, and not just moments, not just the time set aside... Everything, every moment is alive and crammed with meaning. Continuing from the text. And if you would know God, be not therefore a solver of riddles. Rather, look about you, and you shall see him playing with your children. And look into space, and you will see him walking in the clouds outstretching his arms in the lightning and descending in the rain. And you shall see him smiling in flowers, then rising and weaving his hands in the trees. This again is a thing that we talk about a lot. God is in all things, and all things are in God. And as such, all life all meaning, all purpose, all beauty is found in those moments. This is the great glory of life, that we learn to sing with God, to dance with God. That we learn to see where there is justice, where there is love, where there is compassion, 
where there's beauty, strength, glory, wisdom, understanding. In all these places, we see God. In all these things, we see God. This is God in action. This is God in the world. And like I said, I'm not going to belabor this point too much because I just, if you want to know more, I did a whole episode just a couple back called The Prophet on Prayer. And I, I highly recommend that you go back to that. Continuing from the text. Then Almitra spoke saying, we should, na- we should ask now of death. And he said, who would know the secret of death? But how shall you find it unless you seek it in the heart of life? The owl whose night-bound eyes are blind unto the day cannot unveil the mystery of light. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, open your heart wide unto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. Death is the ever-grand mystery that stretches out before us. And it is very hard to talk about. Some because of the natural fear in our species of the unknown. And death is truly the greatest unknown. But I love this question. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, open your heart wide unto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. (laughs) This is a very tricky topic to discuss because, one, I think you should look with skepticism upon anybody who is too certain about any of the great mysteries of the world. Because they wouldn't be mysteries if we had certainty about them. And I would start with the realization that life subsists on life. It takes living matter to sustain a life be it plant matter, animal matter, fungus, what have you. It must be alive. Because when it is dead and it is rotten, it brings disease. And I think we can learn so much from that. And when we remember those who have gone on, when we remember those who have passed through that veil, we should remember them in life. I'm going to continue reading from the text. In the depth of your hopes and desires lies your silent knowledge of the beyond. And like seeds dreaming beneath the snow, your heart dreams of spring. Trust the dreams, for in them is hidden the gate to eternity. Your fear of death is but the trembling of the shepherd when he stands before the king whose hand is to be laid upon him in honor. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling that he shall wear the mark of the king? Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling. There is so much fear of the things that we do not know. There is so much fear of loss, of letting go, of what there is for us, what will come. But as the prophet says, it is like a river meeting an ocean. Are they not one and the same? And in my life, 
in my experiences, in the little dreams that exist in my heart. I believe that we are a drop pulled from that ocean. And to that ocean, one day, we will return. Continuing from the text. For what is it to die, but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing, but to free the breath from its restless tides? That it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered. Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you truly dance. This is a topic that I don't talk about much. This is a topic that I, you can probably tell in the tone of my voice, I am uncomfortable discussing. And again, it's not so much out of fear. It's out of that simple unknowing. It's out of that lack of knowledge. I can tell you my theories. I can tell you my dreams. I can tell you the insights that I feel that I have gleaned through meditation. All of which pale against reality. All of which pale against the truth. But I do believe in spirits. I do believe that there is a spirit within each of us. And I believe that those spirits are interconnected and that life will go on. That life will find a way. That life seeks itself. And in all that we do, we are learning to dance. We are learning to climb. We are learning to sing. And so long as you keep yourself focused on the song and the steps of the dance, and you learn mindfulness and you enter those silences where the mind in mindfulness opens to the true bliss and nature of the world. In there, you shall see the deathless glory of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God, and through him all things were made, and without him nothing would have been made that was made. In him was light, and that light was the life of men. O oh, Holy Lord Jesus, you are our life. You are the resurrection and the life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And none enter into wisdom except by this way, this wonderful way of wisdom and understanding. Open our minds, most holy Lord that we will see your glory and learn to live ever in your endless light. If you've enjoyed this episode and the app that you're listening to me on allows you to rate this episode or the podcast in general, please do that, especially if you're listening in Apple Podcasts. That helps out a lot. That tells the algorithm to share the podcast with more people. If you've got a couple bucks you can send my way, that would be greatly appreciated. Depending on the app, there will either be a link, a button that says support, or in the show notes, there will be a link that says support on Anchor. If you click that, you can support at the $1, $5, or $10 a month levels. That money helps me to keep doing what I'm doing. And recently, to get a new microphone. I hope you like it. I'm still playing around with the settings and making sure everything gets good, but I think it sounds pretty good. So thank you to everybody who has helped out. It really does mean a lot. If you don't have any money or you just don't feel like giving right now, that's fine. I do ask that you pray for me, if you would. Your prayers have power, and they really do help out more than you will ever know. And if you know anybody that you think would enjoy this podcast, please share it with them. That helps out a lot, too. 
If you have any questions or comments, I would love for you to go to anchor.fm and download the Anchor app, follow Wisdom's Cry on there, and you'll see a little button that says voice message. You can send me up to a one minute message. It could be a question, a comment, or a topic you would like to hear discussed on the show. We're almost done with the profit. I have an idea of what I want to do next, but I would love to make sure I'm answering the questions that you're thinking about. If you want to follow me on social media or anything else, you can go to wisdomscry.com and find a link to everything there. And until next time, may God bless you and keep you ever growing in wisdom and compassion. Amen.